Welcome to TradersArmy.com, defending your right to build wealth and preserve capital for generations to come. What's up, everybody? Tuesday morning. Hope you guys are all having an amazing day. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. For those of you guys new to the channel, do me a favor. Hit that little subscribe button down below. Uh, hit the notification bell. Get the updates. If you are not new to the channel and you watch us pretty regularly, do me a favor. Click the click the like button. doesn't take you much time, and, uh, and it helps a lot. Let's the algorithms know that we are indeed alive. So yesterday, quite an eventful day in the markets. Uh, as we had a really strong move on the yuan, uh, you know, China, U.S. trade war tariff, all that fun jazz. But, you know, the thing to consider is that yesterday we came down and we came down pretty hard. But was that an unexpected drop? Maybe the severity and the degree of the drop was unexpected, but our trend direction had already changed. And what's funny about these large drops is that they typically occur after the trend direction has changed. So, you know, maybe you tried to jump in to, to get bullish throughout the day, but in reality, if the trend direction changes, we have to look for confirmation entries, right? That's part of our top performing trade strategies is look for ones that are going with the trend direction. And if not, then we've got to use confirmation entries. And that's kind of what, what, the, what the theme was yesterday. Now, we also had some positions, even from our Sunday night, live trade room that were that were breakdowns that we just kind of held on and, and allow it to run. So um, we're going to look at some some areas today uh, that we could see some decent reversals because we haven't changed our big picture trend direction. It is still down, even though this morning in the S&P we're up. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, S&P this morning, we're up 27 and a half points, uh, almost a full percent, although uh, that's, you know, after our sell off yesterday, that's not not a whole heck of a lot extra. So as we came down from our Sunday evening trade room, we were looking at this level above for a potential reversal. Well, obviously, the breakdown is what really what occurred. Um, came into this confirmation entry, blew through it, came to this limit entry. Now, this limit entry, um, because the trend was down, ideally should have been set as a confirmation entry. Uh, and so price came through there. Now, we did not get to this 2769 area. But with our trend going the other direction, I think that the level is still valid, but it needs to be a confirmation entry. Um, and I added this level yesterday. So actually, in the uh, in the trade feed, uh, we talked a little bit about this level here as a potential for, I believe, uh, a decent reversal. So as price rallies up, I'm going to keep my eye on this one. Now, my stop would have to go above the pivot, which is a bit higher. But this, I think, is a good opportunity to get back in and rejoin this big picture downward trend. So what that does is that gets me um, back into the trend on a nice pullback right here at a speed candle on a four-hour chart of this move down. We've got another area up here as well. So all those areas of supply are indeed above us. Now our four-hour level, uh, the next area is this one down here. Oops, didn't want to remove that. Wanted to remove the, the oval. There you go. Our next level is this area down here, which on the one-hour chart looks a lot more like a rally, a little bit of a base, and then a nice rally, a fair price value area above a pivot low. So that would be the area for a potential reversal. Uh, but it's a confirmation entry because of what our trend direction is doing at this time. Next, NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ, also very similar price actions. The NASDAQ actually didn't touch any of our demand areas yesterday. We had our demand significantly lower in the NASDAQ. Um, but similar uh, similar picture as to where we may see some supply, possibly somewhere up in here. Now, the NASDAQ is up a little bit better than the S&P this morning, um, up 1.1%. One, uh, one, 1. 1 uh, could still see another reversal at this area here. This is the same area that we've got identified in the S&P. I like it more in the S&P than I do in the NASDAQ, but it'd be great if they both got there at the same time. Next, crude oil. So in crude oil, we're looking at this breakout above this area here. We gave it a kiss yesterday, um, but really just kind of staying below it, and it's still just chopping sideways after our big multiple dollar sell-off Thursday and into Friday. 
uh, off of the uh, off of the tariff announcement, and then so it's just been chopping sideways ever since then. Not a whole lot to add from yesterday's price analysis uh, in crude oil. Gold was our best uh, was our best reversal trade of the day outside of the equity breakdowns as we did a really strong touch and go move away from the gold. Uh, and then we we uh, later on took that and moved that moved that stop up to lock in a little bit of profit. And the reason we wanted to do that was uh, that I kind of felt like we may get a bit of a pullback overnight. So it worked for a nice little two to one, three to one level. Um, so I'm going to remove this line here, which is no longer necessary, and I'm going to switch this now to a confirmation entry because we already did a touch and go off of the level, but the level worked out uh, very, very well. Um, as far as demand goes, I've got nearly nothing else to add, but our four-hour big picture is still very much intact. Uh, looking over at bonds and our currency markets, the uh, the bonds continue to rise. Uh, obviously, it's the, the there's strong decrease in rates, right? So bonds will rise on a decrease in rates. Uh, so we're getting a lot of uh, of of demand areas for places for price to return. Uh, but in order for those demand areas to be areas where price returns, then we have to see some sort of a uh, some sort of 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 a sell off, and we've not seen that yet. I think if we do, I think that the breakdown makes the most sense at this point. We could try one of these reversals, but then you're looking at it going against the big picture trend, and it would have to be a confirmation entry anyway. But we are a bit overextended. Uh, and could see a bit of a reversal here. I would just use the breakdown as a way to get in. Uh, in the Aussie, so the Aussie, I did have a setup here in the the uh, the six A, which is our Aussie, uh, our Aussie setup. We did just base in front of it and then pop through before coming back down, uh, and then it's rallied up ever since then. So this level definitely was a failed level. Uh, it hit the stop loss, uh, but it was very it was a small small stop relative to risk. And now the Aussie is putting in a bit of a base. Uh, for price to go a bit higher. So this level up above, I am not a huge fan of. However, I think there's a chance that we will convert that level into a breakout area. So keep an eye on this for a potential breakout as price comes up uh, into this level. Uh, I don't love it for a reversal because of the fact that we're putting in this little bit of a double bottom here. If you see this double bottom we've just put into play, I'd be okay if somebody wanted to go long candle to candle on this. Now, technically, you're still going against the big picture trend direction. We've not put in a higher swing high yet, but there's no doubt that our momentum on the downside is slowing. Uh, in the euro, so the euro came up, touched our level, uh, and we've started to get a decent move away from that area now that that area is completely used up so if you caught that short take your stop move it down just a bit um, if you missed that short i think this very looks a lot like the bonds that you could have another breakdown uh, opportunity in here now yesterday we had the breakout to the upside uh, in the euro and that breakout to the upside took us to the supply level so both the breakout and the reversal um, were prevalent in the euro yesterday, may not have taken that breakout just because we didn't get a ton of basing before the level. We got one candlestick worth of basing, but not, not a ton of basing before the level as it popped out above that area. So now you may look at a breakdown below this area here uh, for, the, for today. Uh, Canadian dollar, you can see that the Canadian dollar, we didn't have any trades on uh, or set up, and it's a good thing we didn't because it really just didn't do a whole lot. It just stayed around and chopped sideways, so not a whole lot to add there. And pretty much it's the same thing in our other currencies as well. The Japanese yen uh, being the one that the, the most is that we had the huge run higher, uh, and so I anticipated a bit of a pullback. We did not pull all the way back to our area of demand, and I'm still holding off on this one. Um, could get a bit of a, of a rollover based on where we are right now in price, uh, we're not doing a great job of basing. Uh, we're, we're, we're basing below this level, which makes that it's kind of the kiss of death of any level. So, but if we roll over from here and you wanted to get short below one of these one of these lows, then I wouldn't be I'd be okay with that because you have some room to run down to this region in here. Uh, great British pound, similar to what happened in the Aussie. We had a little bit of a level set up. We got a little move away from it, but then it just kind of chopped through it. So the, uh, the Aussie and the pound were the two that, uh, that gave us fairly small losses relative to the available risk. 
uh, but the uh, the uh, the Russell level uh, and then also the the gold level were really the two best ones from yesterday as the price was able to get a little bit of a run. Uh, now keep an eye on these levels up above us. So overall, uh, you know, I don't feel like this is a necessarily a panic sell-off. Uh, that's what I've he heard a lot of people talking about, the panic in the streets. It's not a panic sell-off. It's just a I, I think that this is an opportunity for prices, frankly, to get higher from a fundamental standpoint. I don't know if you see a pattern here, right? Trade war, tra trade war ensues. Um, we pressure the FOMC to cut rates. FOMC is more dovish. Trade war ensues. We pressure the FOMC to cut rates. FOMC is more dovish. Trade war ensues. And so it's this. It, we, we've had this cycle now for for the last few months. And what happens is the markets fundamentals are predominantly higher right with unemployment where it is and the stock buybacks still being a major factor in this market so i'm not you know i'm not ready to to throw in the towel and call in a sell off on this market from a broad spectrum uh, but i am saying you know be obviously cautious right our big picture which is our 4 hour chart is still telling us to be sellers so until that's proven otherwise then that's what we do we sell our, our rallies up to supply, and then we, uh, we, we look for confirmation entries in demand or breakouts uh, on the way back up. So that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, please send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. I will talk to you soon. See you.